Okay, so we're back for another video. We're gonna go ahead and assemble Whimsy now. So we've got all of her pieces right here, her hands, her body, chest piece and head, her four wires cut to roughly 16 inches or so, three back spots and four, uh, the large back spots, excuse me, and four of the uh, medium back spots, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna need her head and her chest piece to start. Okay, so we've got Whimsy's head in her chest piece. So at this point, you would have already done the tucking stitches to give her sort of a crescent moon sort of shape to her head. If you haven't yet, you would have taken this tail and you're around 14 and 15 of the head. You just take some t stitches that'll pull the top part down towards the head. And that's what creates that arcing shape, okay? So after you're done with that, you bring the yarn out towards the back base of her head and that's what's gonna lay against this chest piece. So if you look at the chest piece, you'll notice that one side is kind of flat and the other side sort of arches out. Okay, the flat side we're gonna use to go against the body. So the side that's arching out, you would have stuffed here but left this part unstuffed or very lightly stuffed at the top that's where her head is going to rest, okay? Just like this. So if you need to, you can pin it down if that makes it easier. Otherwise, you can just hold her head down while you're sewing it, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do some whip stitching between the chest piece and the head to fasten her head down to the chest piece, okay? So I'm going through the chest piece so that they're connected now, okay? I'm gonna come up and take a stitch in the blue head and then bring it back down through the chest piece. Okay, so you can kind of see that it's like you're weaving it, right? You're weaving the blue to the yellow and back again. You're gonna do this all the way around until you really feel like that head is secure and it's not, doesn't feel wobbly at all. Okay, I'm gonna do some more towards the back here. And again, I'm going in through the blue. See if you look, my, my needle's gone in through the blue and back in through the chest piece and that's creating a nice fastening stitch. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that this top part is connected really well. That's gonna make it so that her head's not all wobbly. Okay, and if you need to go around again or whatever you need to do to where you feel like it's on there, it's not going anywhere, and mine feels. So I think that that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and on this last one, I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back of the chest piece, okay? And I'll show you why in just a second here. All right, so squish her around, make sure that's how you want it. This is kind of your last chance here unless you attach another piece of yarn. All right. So we've got the yarn coming out the back of the chest piece. The next thing you wanna do is grab her body, okay? You're gonna use the same thread to attach the chest piece and head to the body. So when you look at the body, you'll notice that one side is pointed and one side looks more flat, okay? The flat side is where you're gonna to wanna to put this chest piece. The pointed side in a spider is their spinneret where the web comes from, okay? So, I go ahead and try to find the side that looks the plumpest and put that up towards the top where her spots will be. And that's just based on how you're stuffing it. Okay, you're gonna wanna hold the head and chest piece down. Well, here's a look from the side, okay? So the chest piece should end up not below the body, but just right up against sort of the bottom of the body or just above, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did with the head but this time we're gonna do this through the body so that it stays towards the body, okay? So again, we're going in through the blue, back in through the orange, and we are weaving in and out those two different pieces to secure them together. And we're doing this all the way around and if you've had a chance to buy the book and have read the story, I'd love to hear who your favorite character is from the story and perhaps they'll end up in crocheted too later on. 
I've got another few more books to write here, so you never know. All right, getting there. Now we're gonna go back up the other side. Make sure everything is nice and secure. Okay, let's look at how that's coming out. That's looking nice. Okay, almost done. Maybe do, we'll do one more after this. And the body should be nice and secure with the chest piece, okay? So this is gonna be the end of what you need this yarn tail for, okay? So you finished using this blue tail. So in order to fasten off yarn, what I like to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the bottom so that you guys can see it better. Okay, you could do it up by where, where it is up here though. But just to show you, I like to go in to one of the stitches and you need to grab the entire loop of yarn, okay? Otherwise, it's not really gonna work very well. So you need to grab the entire loop from one of the stitches in, in the piece that you're working with. Go through, but before you pull tight, you're gonna go back through that loop, creating a knot, okay? Now, you'll notice there's the knot, and as I pull it, there's a hole underneath, right? Because that's sort of the holes in between each of the stitches. And um, hopefully they're not too big of gaps, but we'll go ahead and go in through that hole, come out somewhere else on the body. And then as we pull that, you'll notice that the knot just got tucked into the body, okay? And you, can, you can't even see it anymore. It's already, it's nice and fastened inside. So again, you could do that on the top stitches. That would work too. I just came down here just to give you a better idea so you could see it better, okay? So now, Go ahead and get your scissors. And if you pull it just slightly tight and then you snip it towards the base, it pops right back into the body. If you still see it there, you can kind of squish the body around and that will tuck in that ending thread. All right, so you've finished with the blue. Get rid of that. All right, so the next thing Whimsy needs is we're gonna go ahead and do her back markings. Okay, so you're gonna need your spots. You have three three large spots and four medium spots for this next section, okay? So I'm gonna do large spots first. I'll tuck away my other things. We'll do one by one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do three of the bigger spots in line with her head, okay? Going back towards her spinneret. So it's gonna go one, two, and three, okay? So we'll start with the one closest to the neck for placement. All right, flip her around. And you're not stuffing these, all right? You're not, you don't want them to be stitched too wide. You kind of want them to pop up a little bit. So you're stitching them a little bit narrow uh, like this. And that way it creates a nice little bump, but it's not gonna be stuffed at all. All right, and now what we're doing is just whip stitching, okay? You're going in through that braided edge and then back down into the blue and coming out next door to another stitch there. Then getting another one of the loops, going back into the blue, coming back out another next door stitch. Wherever, however you want it to be laying, that's those are the stitches that you'll come back up through. So if you wanted it wider, you'd have to go to the wider stitches, but I don't, I want it narrow. Okay, so that's your determining a factor as to where you're gonna put your stitching. Okay, so I'm coming up again. And I think we've got one more here. All right, coming back from there where the original one was. And whoops, I lost my tail here. Hang on a sec, let me re-thread that. All right, so you can see it pokes up, which is what you want. Okay, if there's some, if it doesn't look like it's even, you can always take an additional stitch here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like actually. And then you can come over to, you just wanna come across to one of the edge stitches that you just made, okay? Keep it in the yellow area though, because the next thing you wanna do is fasten off the yarn and cut it away. So we're again, the way we did the blue, we're gonna grab this yellow stitch, any one of the yellow stitches that you just made to fasten that spot to the body. Okay, we're gonna go in through the loop, creating that knot to tie off. 
lift it up to see which hole is underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna go down in there, right underneath. That's the only way that knot's gonna sh that knot's gonna tuck in properly. All right, come out somewhere else in the body, and as you pull, you'll notice that the knot tucks in, and there it goes. Okay, snip off. Okay, squish it around. Excuse me, I'm a needle in my mouth there. Squish it around so that the end pop, pops back in. Grab your next bla um, grab your next large spot. Okay, thread your needle. And do the same, but you wanna go ahead and I would say, let's see, let's put one row See this one blue row? We'll leave that space in between each one because you don't want them right up against each other. You want to make sure there's a space in between, all right, so that you can see the blue in between. So this is where I'm going to start this spot. And again, we're going around. Keep them all the same width, however you did yours. Mine are narrow, so I'm going to keep this one narrow as well. All right, keep going. The last one back to the start and as I said I oftentimes like to just grab this last one here and have it come down too. that way you can't really tell where the start was okay there we go you can see that they're next to each other but there's a space in between do the same as before you're gonna go ahead and grab one of those stitches that you just made Sometimes you have to wiggle them to get the needle to go behind. Okay, make a loop, pull through to make a knot, lift it up, grab that area, that hole underneath, bring this out another spot. Okay, and then pull so that that knot tucks under. Go ahead and cut away the excess yarn. Okay, and then the other way you can get this to pop in is sometimes if you take your needle in from another area and you just wiggle it underneath, it'll pop that stitch back in too, okay? So that's another good way to do it. So you're gonna grab your last back spot and again, put it back down here. I'm gonna let you guys do this one on your own. Put one row of the blue in between as well and then come back when you're ready to do the small back spots. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've done the three large back spots. We're gonna go ahead and do the four medium back spots. You're gonna do two on one side and two on the other, and they're gonna be placed in the in-between spaces. Again, leaving blue in between because you want you don't want anything, any of these spots uh, touching. You want them all to be separate. So I'm gonna lay this down alongside roughly the same amount of distance in between. Okay, make sure that the tail from the beginning magic ring doesn't stick out anywhere. You want it to be tucked underneath. All right, and then we're gonna do the same exact thing as the big ones, only we're using the medium sized spots. Okay, before I close it, I'm gonna tuck that little tail inside so that we don't see it. Okay, let's come back out one of the areas where the stitches are that you just made. Okay, and then we'll take that edge stitch here. Make our loop. And then fasten off the yarn. Lift it up, find that hole underneath, pull this through to another spot on the body. And Pull it until that knot goes into her body. Okay, go ahead and snip that away. And in this case, I'm gonna wiggle my needle to pull it in. Okay, so there's one back spot, one of the medium ones. We're gonna do the next one here. And then after that, I'll let you guys go ahead and do the other two before we do the smallest of the back spots. Okay, so we'll go this way and then you'll mirror that on that side with the other two. All right, 
So again, we're gonna go into the blue, pull through, grab your little outside, looks like a little braid almost, the, the ending edges when you crochet. And we're just gonna go around, making sure that we've left blue space in between the circles or the spots on her back. All right, come back over to one of the other stitches. And we're gonna fasten off here by going ahead and making our knot in this last stitch here, or in this side stitch rather. Pull it tight, lift it up, find that hole underneath come out somewhere else in the body and pull until that knot tucks in just as so. Then go ahead and cut it off. Tuck in that tail. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and meet you guys back. Go ahead and do the last two and then we'll do the final three. Those are gonna be French knots, so we'll do those together once you're finished with the medium back spots. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done the other two of the medium back spots. Now we're gonna do this total of six French knots. And those are gonna be back like the beginning, three large. We're gonna do one, two, and three along either side of the body. So I ended up with a long tail left over from this back spot, so I'm gonna use that to make my French knots. But what you could do is just tie off a strand of thread with a knot and what you would do is you would come up and you wanna go through the fibers of the yarn. You don't wanna come out a hole or your knot's not gonna stick inside, okay? So you'd wanna come up through wherever you think that spot should go, and I'm gonna place mine right in here, but I'm going through the fibers so that way the knot would stick inside the body and not pull out, okay? So once you have that, to do a French knot, what you wanna do is hold your needle close to the base of where the thread is coming out of the piece you're working on, okay? And you're gonna wrap this yarn around your needle. Now, if you're doing a traditional French knot, it's usually wrapped two to three times. So I'm gonna go one and two, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna go one and two. All right, so you can see there's two loops around my hook. Now what you wanna do is you wanna to come to a place next to, not in the same hole as where this thread is coming out. You wanna go next to it, otherwise your knot will just go straight back into the body. All right, so I've got my spot and I'm gonna go to the next area where I'm gonna make another spot. That way I can use the same thread. But before you pull the needle all the way through, make sure you've tightened this yarn so that this, this knot is a nice tight knot. If you make it loose, it's gonna look very bubbly looking, which is not what you want. Okay, so there's a little spot right there, okay? Now we'll do the next one. Again, get your needle near the base of where your thread is coming out. Wrap it around your needle twice Go to another stitch nearby, but not, not in the same hole. Go back out wherever you want the next one to be, if you're making a next one. And before you pull that through, make sure you grab this thread and pull that knot tight so that way you don't have a loose knot. You want it to be a nice, nice tight knot. Okay, and you might have to wiggle it to get it to come through. But as you can see, You've made a nice little knot here. You've got your other knot here. If they tuck in, you can kind of pull them out just slightly so that you can see them. All right, we're gonna do one more. Okay, now I'm working on the other side. If you want your knots to be a little bit bigger, I've done one here. This is a, when you wrap it around three times. This is when you wrap it around two times. So depending on what look you want, um, it's not a huge difference, so you can really do either way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish Wednesday doing the three just to show you. So you'd wrap it around once, twice, and three times. And then you'd go in again to a nearby stitch, but not exactly in the same hole. 
and then bring it up to where you want the next one to go. Kind of gauge based on where you put the other one here so that they're even. And before you pull through, make sure that you've tightened it around that needle. Okay, and pull through, all right. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead, we finished the back spots. We're gonna go ahead and do the internal wiring for her legs. So you need to cut four lengths of 12 gauge jewelry wire, about 16 inches or so. We'll go ahead and snip off any excess later using our pliers and cutting tool, okay? And this is my 12 gauge jewelry wire. I have a huge roll of it, but they come in smaller rolls, much smaller than this. Okay, so get your four lengths, grab Whimsy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through her chest piece to do these legs, okay? So what you want is first, you're gonna do one that's gonna be sort of like her arms, okay? And it's gonna come in one through one towards the front. Come in, try to come into the, about the same spot but on the other side and push it through, okay? So that looks good for her arms. All right, so now to do her other legs, we're gonna go ahead and go back towards the back area here. So I'm doing one couple rows up and towards the back a little bit. And again, grab that through on the other side, roughly in the same, about same spot if you can. You kind of have to prod it a little bit to get it to come through where you want. One thing you can always try to do if you're having a hard time finding this spot is you can always try to sort of wiggle the hole a little bit bigger with a needle. And that way it's just a little easier for your wiring to find it. Here, you can see it's coming through. You figure it has to go around the stitching too or the, the stuffing, which is, can always be a little problematic. All right, if any of the stuffing pops out, like it just did, you just take your needle and just wiggle it, work it back in. You can always take the end and push it through as well. Okay. All right, so there's two arms, okay? It's okay if they get bent. Don't worry about it. Let's do another one. That out of the way, there we go. Okay, there's three and one more. I'm kind of going in between these two right here and the uh, the row in between. Oh, all right, that was a good one. Okay, so that was the most t difficult time I've ever had putting these wirings in. So I hope you didn't have as difficult a time as I did, but we've got our four coming out of either side. And so now what we wanna do is we're gonna bend three of the wires up on either side, the ones that are not the arms. These are our arm ones here. Okay, so those ones are gonna bend down towards the front. Okay, so now that you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna bend, leaving a shoulder area like so. You're gonna bend this down towards the ground on each of them, okay? I would do them, try to do the same wire. So like you can tell these two are connected, right? So use the same wire and do that on both sides. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this one come here. And if you want there to be a tighter shoulder, you can always take your pliers and use those to help you bend that shoulder area a little bit. Entirely up to you. Okay, now make sure to bring it in so that you don't have extra from the other side on this side, otherwise your little leg will be really short on the other side, okay? So you're gonna start bending down these arms and there we go. Okay, 
let's do this last one here. You can always try to bend them at the same time if that helps. This is probably the hardest part of Wednesday is working with these legs, but she's a spider, so you've got to have them. Okay. So now you kind of work to bend them out just a little bit so she's more spider-like. What we're going to do is we want to trim them down to the shortest one so that they're all relatively the same. So this is going to be my shortest one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these down a little bit. Okay, so I'm taking off about, is that about an inch and a half? Okay, and if she's not gonna stand very well right now, then that's okay, so don't worry about that yet. Okay, and then as far as her arms in the front go, those ones are gonna be sort of angled like she's crossing her arms. Okay. So let's cut those down. Okay. All right, and now what you wanna do, and you're gonna need your pliers for this next part. Get everything out of the way here. What I like to do, and you don't have to, but these are very sharp, okay? So what I like to do is to bend a loop up, and this is actually gonna be really helpful when we're attaching the hand to the rest of the leg in order to make it so that it doesn't stick through the hand, okay? So you're gonna grab it with your pliers, and you're gonna start twisting them up. Okay, then grab them. When you get the loop, grab it and tighten. Okay, so you've got a nice little loop and it's not a rough edge, it smooths it out for you and that's a nice little loop for you to put the hand on later. And go ahead and do that with every single one of the legs and then I will meet you back at the end of that, tell you what to do next. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done all the wiring as far as getting the loops on each end and as you can see, you could just keep her this way if you wanted her to be more spindly. That's totally fine, and this is kind of how she looks. Um, this is the worst surface to have her stand up on, so if you have anything, you know, carpety, that would probably hold her up better. Um, but at this stage, this is when we're gonna go ahead and do the legs and putting the little hands on the ends of the legs. Okay, so you need to get your black yarn so the first thing that you wanna do is you're gonna go ahead and put a slip knot, leave a tail, put a slip knot on your hook. Okay, doesn't matter which leg to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and just start here towards the back so it's easier to see. Okay, make sure you have your working yarn, not your tail. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be chaining around that wire for the leg, okay? So in order to do that, you wanna go ahead and wrap the yarn underneath, but keep the hook on top. You can see that's now be in between my yarn here, okay? So now I'll go ahead and yarn over, hold that, hold that slip knot in your hands just to make it easier for you to have that tension and pull through. Okay, and that's connected it here on the leg. Now again, you're going to wrap the yarn around and around the hook and pull through. Okay, wrapping it around the yarn and pulling through. Wrapping it around the arm and pulling through wrapping it around the arm and pulling through. And this is creating the chain and then you're looping it around that wire to hide the wire inside, okay? So one way to do this too is that as you're wrapping it around, you just bring it up and around that arm, okay? So that way when you pull through, you're already where you need to be, wrapping it around and pulling through, wrapping it around 
and pulling through. And you're gonna keep doing this until you have a long enough chain for whatever length the arm is for you, okay? So you want this chain to start from here at the end of the hook all the way up to where it touches her chest. And make sure, because as you're pulling on this, it's gonna pull on the wire on the other side. So just make sure that you're still at an even length as you're going about this, otherwise you'll be doing a chain on part of this leg on this side. Okay, so just long enough to get it all the way to the body. And I'll come back and show you what to do once you have that chain around the arm. Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished doing the chain on the first arm. I'm double checking to make sure the length of the arms is still even, and they are. At this point, pull the loop up. You're gonna snip off the working yarn tail. Okay, go ahead and pull that thread through the loop and create a knot. Okay, so now you've fastened that off. You should have one end towards the chest piece and one end towards the hand, okay? So first we're gonna go ahead and do the chest piece. So get your yarn needle. Okay. All right. It's not easy to work around all of these arms. I'll give you that, <laughs> but it is doable. So very similar to how we attached the, the uh, spots here, we're gonna go in through the orange, come out around another spot near where that wiring is okay so now you've connected it and you're just going to take some stitches through the black on either side okay and just kind of do your best to fasten it around that wire so that you don't see where the wire is coming out from the body I'm going in through the black again, going in through the chest piece, coming out over here. So I would do that about four times or so, just picking up a, another part of that chain that you started with, and then bring it back to the back, around that wire, okay. Being careful not to grab any of the other legs while you're at it. There we go. Okay. And then you're gonna go ahead and fasten it off, grabbing, you can move the leg if you need to since it is bendable. And just grab a, a thread here and do what you've normally done. Make your loop fence go through to form your knot and then try to tuck that knot into the chest piece. Coming out from the other side of the chest piece and tucking it in that way, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and clip this one off and tuck that in. Okay. All right, so now we need to go ahead and do the hand. So let's grab one of our hands here, okay? And what I found to be helpful, you don't have to do this, but this is how I found it to be helpful to put the hands on. First, I thread the needle on the leg, okay? And I take that and I go in through the inside of the hand, through the middle there, and just come out along the end of it somewhere okay so that pulls the hand up to the, where the leg is now put the hook hooked leg inside of that hand okay and then pull a little bit tight you're not going to be weaving this end in. you're just going to be clipping it off later okay now take your other tail the hands tail not the handmaid's tail the hands tail <laughs> And then what you're gonna do is similar to what we did towards the back, but now we're gonna take this hand and connect it to this end of the chain. Taking a stitch in every one of those four 
single crochets that that you ended up with on the hand okay and the goal here is just to cover the wire that's our entire goal for this piece perfect so now she's got her leg she's got the hand on the end now we go ahead and fasten off this thread just as we normally do with our knot okay we're going to tuck it into the hand and now we're just going to clip this one off and clip this other one off that we just used to guide the leg into the hand and then just tuck in those ends as best as you can. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right, so we've finished with the first leg. Now we have to do that with every single one of these eight legs. It'll be easier with the arms to keep them out straight like so, make sure they're even again, okay? And then go ahead and finish up all of those legs, doing your chain along the leg, stitching that end to the chest piece, bringing on the hand, and then stitching the hand around the leg and finishing off to finish the hand, okay? I will meet you back at the end so we can look at how Whimsy's looking at that point. And the last thing we're gonna do with her are her eyes at the top, okay? So I'll meet you back at that. Okay, so just for time's sake, I grabbed another one of the whimsies I've been working on that doesn't have the arms because I wanna show you how to do those French knot eyes, okay? So I've got my charcoal gray, it's kind of a grayish black color that I'm gonna be using. You're gonna grab a strand of that, a decent sized strand because you're gonna be making six French knots for her other six eyes. Tie the end, decent size knot so it doesn't come through the stitches. Okay, now let's go ahead and thread the yarn. Okay, so with Whimsy, her other six eyes, they rest above her eyebrows here, almost looking like a bow but they don't touch, okay? So we'll have a bigger French knot, a smaller French knot, and a bigger French knot. And that's three eyes on that side, and we'll do the same on the other side as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and come in through another hole somewhere else. We're coming up, let's go ahead and do that first big French knot, okay? It's gonna go right above her eyebrow. And remember to go through the stitches. You don't wanna go through the hole or into the hole, you wanna go through the fibers of the yarn, okay? To hold that, that knot inside of her body. All right, so it should pull through that hole there and get stuck there, and that's what we want. Hold your yarn towards the head. So for the large French knots, I actually wrap the yarn around five times. So there's one, two, three, four, and five, okay? You wanna go ahead and put the needle nearby to the stitch that you came out of, but not in the same place. That way the knot sticks, okay? And I'm gonna come out where I'm gonna do the other big knot and we'll do the smaller one in the middle after, okay? So go ahead and hold it tight. Might have to wiggle it a little bit to get it through. Go slow. Just like that, okay? So there's one of her eyes. We're gonna go ahead and do the next big one. We're gonna wrap it around five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, coming out into a different place, not the same place, all right? And then the last one is gonna be right in between those two. Okay, so hold it tight. And wiggle. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through slowly. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and do one more in between the two. This one we'll do smaller. So we did five around on the first two. We'll go ahead and do three around, just a regular French knot. So one, two, and three. And coming up into the center. 
And then we're gonna go on to the other side of here. So let's go ahead and find the spot we want it to come up through for the first big French knot, okay? Pull through, slowly, all right. Okay, so you can see there's still blue space in between the small French knot on one side, the two larger on the other two sides. And it kind of gives it an appearance of kind of like a bow. Okay, let's go ahead and do five times around. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we're gonna come out where we're gonna do the other large French knot and make sure that you're looking at both sides to make sure that you're making them even. Okay, tight, wiggle. So there's the first large one. Now go to the next large one, wrap it five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, find your next place where it's gonna come through. And then go in between those two for the small, making sure to hold it tight when you pull the yarn, yarn needle through. Again, going slow, if the not starts to try to pull in, just gently bring it back out again, okay? So there's the next big knot. We're gonna do the last little one. One, two, three, okay, just three times around. Find the spot you wanna go. Now, to fasten off, I'm gonna go back towards the first French knot, okay? Or the, actually, that's the third French knot. It doesn't really matter, but I'll go back towards this other one here. All right, and then go ahead and gently pull, making sure that your knot didn't get pulled in. All right, there we go. So we've got our three eyes on one side, three eyes on the other side. And we're gonna go ahead and tie off to this first one here. So find the, uh, go ahead and find the yarn that's underneath that knot and make your loop on that one. Pull it tight but not too hard and now go ahead and find the underneath space and tuck that knot in okay cut off the yarn and weave it in poke it back in rather <laughs> there we go all right, so there's her eyes. We've got one large, one small, one large, one large, one small, one large on either side. So she's got her eight eyes total, which is what arachnids have. And once you go ahead and finish the legs, then she'll be done.